We're live. Try to get it up as close as you can. When you were doing it. John. Let's go. Good afternoon, class. Good afternoon. I want to remind everyone to please silence your cell phones and any other electrical devices at this present time. Welcome. My name is Kenyatta Jackson. I will be your moderator for this afternoon session. Welcome to another lecture given by members of the Chicago Northside Zoom class. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to show and prove to you the existence of Yahweh our Elohim and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity until this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year of 1931. The Chicago Northside Zoom class was established in the year 2007. And at this time, I would like to introduce to you the school officials, the Dean of the Chicago Northside branch is Dr. John Quates, and the, pre and the president is Dr. Patrick Maturity. In this school, we use the true, correct, original names and titles of the Father, the Word of Son, and of the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been abruptly substituted by the word Lord. The true title of the word of Son is Elohim, and it has been abruptly substituted by the word God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua, and his name has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lord and God are titles and they are not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our Creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in any good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove to you that neither the Hebrew language, nor the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any letters or characters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. And neither was there a letter J in our English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible rendering of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit. And in this state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source and substance, limits, and bounds of everything. Now we have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose the cloud to symbolize himself because the cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. Now we have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being, 
That means having a shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine vision and understood in divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in the physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also, in this school, we teach by a divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses the top of Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in the vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in this universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes this pattern. The primary constitutional aims and objectives of this North Side Chicago Zoom class are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and as he actually exists. And second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or the so-called law of nature and the power ligament man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophies, modern, practical, and occult science. And fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. And six is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. And seven is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. And eight is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. And ninth is to make known that Yahweh, from the beginning, ordained that there is no other name given among men whereby men can and must be saved, saving in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is to speak the truth. Today's scripture lesson is John the third chapter, which will be read by Dr. Mariah Coleman. And we will have a prayer given by Dr. Amir Coleman. May we please have our prayer. And our topic for this afternoon session is, what does it mean to be born again? Good afternoon, class. Good afternoon. Let's take a moment to bow our hearts and minds in a moment of prayer. We want to thank Yahweh for giving us another opportunity to come, to hear, to learn, know, and understand 
this great gospel, which is his death, burial, and resurrection, according to the scriptures. We thank him for the abundance of mercy and grace that he has bestowed upon us and the understanding that he has imparted unto us and allowed it to remain and be fruitful. We ask that as we gather here this afternoon, that we may be edified through the Holy Spirit preaching whomever comes on this floor, and that we may learn and know something about him and have a clear understanding, a greater understanding of him. And we thank you for being with us, for keeping us, and for allowing us to retain the things that he has taught us in our hearts and minds. With all that, I'll say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'll be reading John, the third chapter, out of the King James Version. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Yahshua by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from Yahweh. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except Yahweh be with him. Yahshua answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of Yahweh. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Yahshua answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it whisteth, whisteth and thou hearest the sound of it thereof but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Yahshua answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know. And testify that we have seen, and received, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in him. And Moses lifted up the serpent. Uh, in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For Yahweh sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of Yahweh. And this is the, con the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, 
that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in Yahweh. After these things came Yahshua and his disciples into the land of Judea, and there he tarried with them and baptized. And John also was baptizing in Anna near to Salome, because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized. For John was not yet cast into prison. Then there arose a question between some of some of John's disciples and Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, we that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizing, and all men come to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Messiah, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom which standeth and heareth him rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This, is, this my joy therefore is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is an earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he hath seen and heard that he testified. And no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony hath set to his seal that Yahweh is true. For he whom Yahweh hath sent speaketh the words of Yahweh. For Yahweh giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. The father loveth the son and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not on the son shall not see life. But the wrath of Yahweh abideth on him. That was John Adventure. Thank you, Dr. Amir Coleman, for the prayer, and thank you, Dr. Mariah Coleman, for the scripture lesson. Again, I want to remind everyone to please silence all cell phones and any other electrical devices at this time. And today uh, will be a two speaker format. We have a special topic, which is, what does it mean to be born again? And our first speaker for this afternoon's session is a pleasure and honor to call on Dr. May Cole. Dr. Cole. Good afternoon, class. Yeah. I'm really thankful to be here. And I want to give, I want to give uh, Yahweh our element, the Yashin side, all the honor, praise, and glory, knowing that he is the teacher and he is the speaker. Um, as moderator uh, said, the topic is, what does it mean to be born again? Now, I know uh, I came up in the Baptist church, and at least when I was in the Baptist church, the standard was to be born again was sanctification to the flesh. It was like, uh, you know, you uh, don't wear no makeup, no jewelry, you know, uh, your skirts, at least to your knee or below, you know, and it's, it's sanctification unto the flesh. But we come here and find out that. You know, Yahweh is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I like to uh, go and get, I think, maybe some third chapter Genesis where of uh, transgression. Um, bear with me because I'm not a scripture 
specialist. <laughs> but if we can get, uh, I want to uh, start with the transgression because uh, Yahweh says something uh, that uh, was very profound. And that was, he said, in the day that you touch, you will surely die. Now, we had to come up in this school to find out just what that means. But go ahead, go ahead and read that. Genesis 3 and 1. Mm -hmm. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahweh Elohim had made. Mm -hmm. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath Elohim said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the now, garden. Now we have we have pictorial illustrations because it's already been said by the moderator that this school was founded upon the divine a divine vision and revelation that our founder had. And these pictorial illustrations are showing us what he saw. Okay, so looking at our pictorial illustration, what we're reading is going on in the first age, the creative age. Go ahead. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, mm -hmm. but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim hath said, ye shall not eat of it, Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Mm -hmm. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for Elohim doth know. Now, that you see that he came to the woman, not the man, okay? Now, the woman is pointing up to the body of Yahshua Messiah. See, he came to the woman, not to the man. Go ahead. For Elohim doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as Elohim, Elohim. Knowing good and evil. Okay, now it says, in the day that you eat, you should surely die. Now I want you to go and get the genealogies of uh, uh, the generations where it talks about how old Adam was. I'm not sure what that is. But we need to get how old Adam was when he passed away. Because we just heard it said that in the day that you eat, you will surely die. But then Adam lived how long? Somebody could find that. We want to get it out the Bible so you know it's there. And then uh, also, after you get that, I want you to get the promise that was made to Abraham in Genesis and hold that. Okay, we have, uh, it's going to be Genesis until 5 and 5. Okay. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. Okay. So now we just read that Yahweh said that in the day that you touch, you should surely die. But yet still Adam lived 930 years. So that sounds like a contradiction. Well, what do you mean? You know, he lived already, folks say already, you know, the Bible's lying because it says that he lived 930 years, but God said in the day that you touch, you shall die. But see, we're not going according to man's time. We go on according to Yahweh's time. Let's let's uh, get uh, Second Peter. Is it three and eight about time with Yahweh? We want to read that. Okay. Now remember, we read in the day that you touch, you should surely die. That's what Yahweh said, right? So let's read what time is with Yahweh. Second Peter three and eight. Mm -hmm. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. Mm -hmm. That one day with Yahweh is as a thousand years, and as a thousand years as one day. Okay, so it says, in the day did you touch, you will surely die. But time with Yahweh is a thousand years. Adam lived 930 years. We just read all this in the book, now didn't we? So that lets us know that indeed he did die in that day, according to Yahweh's time, not man's time. But there's something even more significant here. When he said, in a day you should touch, you should surely die. But yet he lived on for 930 years. What kind of death was he talking about? Uh, get Before you get Abraham, get a uh, death reign from Adam to Moses. See, because the death that occurred with Adam in the day that he touched, even though it was in the day according to Yahweh's time, is here in his consciousness. See, he fell in his consciousness before uh, it says that Adam was made a living soul. So before that transgression in the garden, he had a connection with his creator. He was able to communicate with his creator. But after that death, it was psychological and spiritual 
and he lost that connection with his creator. So what mankind did, they were still trying to grope in darkness because they knew there was something greater than themselves. So what they did, they started worshiping nature. They started worshiping animals. They started worshiping the elements. They started worshiping each other. You see what I'm saying? But let's get what uh, says death reigns. And then we're going to go to Abraham. See, because Yahweh had to make a way of escape. And it says in um, Isaiah 46, 9 and 10, that he declared the end from the beginning. And I think if you go on a read, reading there in Genesis, it tells you that mankind is going to be saved in childbirth. Okay, but go ahead and read there. Romans 5, start at 12. Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the Okay, world. now it says by one man, sin entered into the world. See, and that sin he was told not to touch of the tree. See, and he said, in the day that you touch, you will surely die. So that sin entered into that world by one man, which is Adam. Read. And death by sin. And death by sin. And so death passed upon all and get, men. Get the definition, because you know how, how I like the definition. Get the definition what sin is, okay? Because there's a lot of definitions in the Bible. See, and as I said, when I first started, you know, we thought sin was, girl, you wearing that makeup, take that makeup off. What you got that lipstick on for? You see what I'm saying? Girl, you got them high heels on that short skirt, pull that skirt down. You see what I'm saying? See, that's what we were taught. At least that's what I was taught in the church that sin was. But the scriptures is going to tell you the definition of what sin is. Hold what you got there, Baron. Do we have that definition of sin? This is sin from the Merriam-Webster online dictionary. Mm -hmm. An offense against religious or moral law. Okay. I want it in the scripture. Third chapter. I want the definition in the scripture what sin is. Even though that's fine what you're reading there. But I want it in the scripture because we are told to stay in the book. And there is a definition of sin in the book. So let's get that. I can say it, but I want it read out of the book. Okay, this is 1 John 3 and 1 John 3 and 4. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He that said, one minute, one second, Dr. Uh, Cohen. I'm going to make sure you do that. You're talking about the definition of sin? Okay, thing. yes. We got according to Yahweh, John, not man. And four, mm -hmm. whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. Mm -hmm. For sin is the transgression of the okay, law. Okay, so there's your definition. Sin is a transgression of the law. And we know that Adam and Eve, Adam was in the uh, Adam uh, was in the transgression. Okay, the man. See, but Eve, you know, willingly followed. You know, I, it's a picture here to depict right the there. head is. You see what I'm saying? And it's the scripture uh, that talks about that. And maybe I got it wrong. Is it Eve that was in the transgression, or Adam that was in the transgression? This is school. You see what I'm saying? This is school. Right. Okay. Right. And ain't none of us perfect. Right. The woman, that's it. The woman was in the transgression. You see what I'm saying? But Adam transgressed the law because he was told not to touch that tree. And he did it anyway. Yeah. But he did it for the love of the woman. Because, see, she said she took and she ate. And she said, well, come on, baby. You know, come on, come on. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You know, and, and, and you know, when the, when the satanic spirit appeared to her, it tells you, I think it's either in Ezekiel, Isaiah, how bad he was. He was beautiful. Adam just looked like a regular dude. You see what I'm saying? But it said every precious stone was his cover. And it was shiny things. You know how we, we are as women. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, she looking at her husband. She's like, he's just a regular dude. And this dude is like, fine as wine. It's like, whatever he said, I'm going with it. You see what I'm saying? That's just the way it is. You see what I'm saying? That's just the way it is. And that's how it happened. You know, it's still that way today. We don't go for the good guys. We want the bad guys, the bad boys. Oh, yeah, he a challenge. I like him. I like his. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's the, it's the same to this day because of what happened in the garden. But go ahead. So it says sin is a transgression of the law. 
So Baron, you can go ahead and continue where you at. Okay. Um, Romans 5 and uh, let's see. Okay. 13. According to the law, sin was in the world. Uh-huh. But sin is not imputed with it. There is no law. Okay, it says the sin is not imputed when there is no law. Yes. Nevertheless, mm -hmm. death reigned from Adam to Moses. Okay, now it says death reigned from Adam to Moses. See, because we know that in the uh what what uh started the antediluvian age, and it was said in the transgression about the realm of time. These we got three ages in the realm of time. Okay, and this first age in time uh began with the transgression. You see what I'm saying? That ushered in time. You see what I'm saying? So all the way from Adam to Moses, death reigned. See, because when Yahshua Messiah came in on the second age in time, see, they were under, they were still under that law. See, and they call it the law of Moses. They were still under that law. You see what I'm saying? So it says death reigned from Adam to Moses. Go ahead. Even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. See, it says even over them that had not sinned after, you know, everybody wasn't there. When Adam and Eve did that, but see, all man can, can came out the loins of Adam and Eve. So they were subjected unto that same death or that same alienation from their creator. Go ahead. Who is the figure of him that was to come. See, so Adam willingly dying for his bride. See, he is a figure of him that was to come, which is Joshua Messiah, who willingly died for his bride, which is mankind. You see what I'm saying? But go ahead. See, because... Yahweh has a purpose, a pattern, and a plan. We got this pattern, you know, that shows us in explicit detail about the true pattern, which is Yahweh Elohim himself. It says up here, Elohim, the archetype or the original pattern of the universe. So he has a purpose, a pattern, and a plan. And that plan is a plan of salvation. Over here it says chart on pattern a plan of salvation. But it's a certain way that he set this whole thing up. And he said that the woman is going to be saved through childbearing. But let's go on because he set up a covenant with, uh, uh, um, he shows a people through the loins of Abraham. So let's go back and read that. And that's in Genesis. Because it says that he'll bless his seed. If you can get that, I think it is in Genesis, right? Yeah, okay. Now, okay. 12, uh, it says 12 and 1. Uh huh. Now Yahweh had said to Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred. Now, now Adam, um, Abraham was in uh, the Ur of the Chaldees. That was his country. That was his country where he was at. And there they uh, were a. Uh, a polytheistic nation. They worship all kind of gods here again because they had no clue about their creator. They were groping in darkness and they and they had no thank you. They had no clue of their creator. So, you know, they got all these different gods they worshiping. You know, the God for the grain, the God for the sun, the God for the moon, the God for the water, you know, because they didn't know. You see what I'm saying? So he is in his his nation is the Ur of the Chaldees, and Yahweh at the point of time chose Abraham to build a nation from. And he said, "What? Read that again." It said, "Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred." He said, "Now you need to get away from here. Get get out of the country and out of your kindred. Read and from thy father's house mm -hmm. unto a land that I will show thee." Yes. And I will make it uh, be a great nation. Now he said, now through your loins, I'm going to make a great nation. Read. I will bless thee and make thy name great. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt be a blessing. Okay. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curses thee. He said, now I'm going to bless your nation and I'm going to make it great. Not your nation, but the, a nation through your loins and make it great. I'm going to bless them to bless thee and curse them to curse thee. Go ahead. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. See, now we look here where it says the promise, the Abrahamic promise, and it comes all the way down where Yahshua Messiah and it says fulfilled. And he said, and through thy loins, all the nations of the world is going to be blessed. Mm -hmm. So Abram departed as Yahweh had spoken unto him. Okay. Now we know that Abraham was obedient, you know, and he got away from his kindred, you know, and we know through time, you know, he had Ishmael, and then later on, he had Isaac, okay? But we know that according to Yahweh's purpose, Isaac was the seed that was called, not Ishmael. Ishmael was of the bondwoman, but Yahweh blessed Abraham 
and uh, Sarah in Sarah's old age to be able to bear forth an offspring. You see what I'm saying? So I'd like to go and get where uh, Abraham offered his son. See, because Abraham is a type of Yahweh and Isaac is a type of Yahshua. Okay, so let's go and get that. See, because we read in the, uh, the scripture lesson, the Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So let's pick it up. See, because we're going to see a type of that right here. The same principle. Go ahead. This is Genesis 22 and 1. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass that after these things, that Elohim did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. Mm -hmm. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son. Now, why would he say, why would he say, take thy son, thy only son? He had Ishmael too. But he said, take thy son, because Isaac was the son of the promise. That's why that's the one he was concerned with, because Isaac was the son of the promise. That's why he said, take thy son, thy only son. Continue to read. Whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, mm -hmm. and offer him there for a burnt offering upon the... Now he's telling him, I want you to offer your only son as a burnt offering. Now, you know, that's a hard thing. I was talking to Ricky the other day. We was talking, I said, we was talking about the story. And I said, you know, you're my only son. Now, what if y'all wait? I said, I'm so glad we we ain't in that that age no more. And we got to prove, you know, our obedience that way. I said, baby, because I don't know. I don't know. And then Ricky looked at me. He said, but mom, you have to do it. If Yahweh said, if Yahweh said, said, you have to do it. I said, I don't know, man. I don't know. You know, but anyway, I want you to drop down where they, uh, he tells his, uh, the guys that wouldn't say, stay here for us. We're going to go up. Da, 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 da. Okay. Drop down there. This is first. And Abraham said unto his young men, abide mm -hmm. ye here with the ass, and okay. I and the lad will go up. Yonder and I worship, okay, and come again unto you. Mm -hmm. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they both. Now wait a minute. Now he didn't put he. You is that the part? Is there a part there where uh, Isaac said, "Well, I see the uh, the uh, seven okay. birds." And Isaac spake unto Abraham mm -hmm. his father and said, "My father." And he said. Here am I, my son. Mm -hmm. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Yeah, he looking around. Well, I see the fire and the wood, but where's the lamb? You yeah, see what I'm saying? Now, Abraham, an old man. You see what I'm saying? He's an old man. Now, Isaac is the son. But the principle is that he is obedient unto death. He didn't fight his father and said, No, nah, dad, I ain't getting up there. Right. Or you won't have to find another sacrifice because it ain't going to be me. You see what I'm saying? He didn't say that. He willingly. Got up there. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience unto death. See, that's pointing to a type and a shadow. And then when Abraham did that, he knew that Yahweh gave him a son in his old age. And he knew that if Yahweh gave him a son in his old age, you know, he'd give him another son. So technically, that's a principle of being born again. You see what I'm saying? We're talking about principles through the law and the testimony, see, because there's a spiritual reality to it. But we're talking about, you know, because the first speaker obligation, if possible, is to lay a foundation. Ooh, father, help me. But anyway, <laughs> go ahead. And Abraham said, my son, Yahweh, will provide himself a lamb. See, he said that Yahweh himself is going to provide himself a lamb. And we know that John said, behold, the lamb of Yahweh was taken away the sin of the world. You see what I'm saying? All these things that we're reading all these Bible stories and these different things that are being set up is pointing up to Yahshua Messiah, see, and his love for his offspring, see, for him to willingly die for mankind so that mankind could be born spiritually so. See, mankind, you know, they had 613 some odd laws and ordinances, okay? And we know when the children of Israel, they got delivered out of Egypt, you know, they crossed over to the dividing waters of the Red Sea. They got over here in Canaan's land and they built a golden calf. When uh, Moses went up in that mount, they said, well, Moses, uh, he must be dead, you know, because he was up there 40 days and 40 nights. So they said, oh, yeah, well, Moses must be dead, you know. So let us say that this brought us out, you know, and they had Aaron, which is a type of the high priest. You see what I'm saying? The same type of thing that happened back in the garden, the same principle. 
you know, they said, well, he delayed his coming. So we're going to say that this is what brought us out. See, and in Egypt, this was like one of the principal gods, Apis the bull. So they said, well, we're going to say that this brought us out. You see what I'm saying? You know, so it wasn't nothing in them to be able to keep that law. See, it was 613 some odd laws. We are commonly taught about the Big Ten. You see what I'm saying? I always say that, the Big Ten, you know, Ten Commandments. But uh, we go in the book, we find out was a whole lot more than that. You see what I'm saying? But any more there? Uh, well, they go down and then they repeat. Huh? Did you want any? Now, he said that Yahweh himself, Yahweh, uh, read that part again about Yahweh himself. A, a first, and Abraham uh -huh. said, my son, Yahweh will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Okay, he said that Yahweh himself is going to uh, um, prepare an offering. Now, also in that area, it talks about that ram called the thickest, if you can read that part. Okay, this is uh, 10 first. Mm -hmm. And Abraham stepped forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Now, see, he was he was actually going to kill his yeah. only son, according to the promise. He had his hand back. I mean, that's how close he got. He had his hand back with the knife, and he was going to kill him. What happened? Read. And the angel of Yahweh called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. Mm -hmm. And he said, here am I. And he oh, said, when he was getting ready to kill his son, read. And he said, lay not thine hand upon the lad. Okay, so he told him, no, he stayed in his hand. He was getting ready to kill him and he stayed in his hand. Don't lay your, uh, don't lay the uh, knife against the lad. Go ahead. Neither do thou anything unto him. Mm -hmm. For now I know that thou fearest Yahweh. See, now he knows. He was... He had such faith that he was willing to give his only begotten son, just like the principle of Yahweh. See, taking on shape and form in part. You know, it says that he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The same principle. See, so he proved himself. Obedience is better than sacrifice. You see what I'm saying? Because Joshua Messiah, you know, he was the only acceptable sacrifice unto Yahweh. See, but he was obedient unto death, just like Isaac as a type was obedient unto death. See, obedience is better than sacrifice. See, because through the obedience of Yahshua Messiah, mankind was delivered from this old law, this water baptism, physical baptism. See, all these uh, ceremonies and sacrifices and, and all these things they had to do, cardinal, physical, given to a literal Physical people get uh, Hebrews uh, nine and nine. See, but Yahshua Messiah, see, being obedient unto death, see that obedience uh, being better than sacrifice, even though he did sacrifice himself, the only acceptable fact, sacrifice to Yahweh. See, now mankind can be born again. See, he can be delivered back unto that state that Adam had prior to the trans transgression. Mankind can now, through the death, burial, resurrecting Yahshua Messiah and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, mankind now can be made a living soul. Once again, where now he's no longer alienated from his creator. See, now, you know, the New Testament is written in the heart of man. We're going to get Jeremiah 31, 31. See, but we know that Yahshua Messiah, see, he came in. Now we have newness of life. Now we have life and have it more abundantly. Now we're born from up above. You see what I'm saying? We've been delivered, see, through the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua Messiah. Yeah, we still in the physical part of this, uh, this uh, creation or the physical part of this purpose, but we can be standing on earth and elevated in heaven, in our hearts and in our mind. You see what I'm saying? But uh, what I ask for? <laughs> okay. Okay. And also, uh, I want to uh, state also with the children of Israel, they uh, they messed up miserably. There were several times that Yahweh uh, told Moses, say, look, look, step aside. I'm going to kill them all right now. You see what I'm saying? He said a couple of times. He said, I'm going to kill them all right now. You see what I'm saying? But Moses said, well, look, if you do that, you know, they're going to say, well, he brought them out there just to kill them all. What kind of God is he? You see what I'm saying? He said, Moses was a type of intercessor. Just like Yahshua is the intercessor for mankind. It's just beautiful how he set this thing up, how we're able to see the principles of death, burial, 
resurrection over and over again. How we're able to see a principle of blood, water, spirit over and over again. How we're able to see the principle of being born again over and over again. Just like I'll give you a, a physical example, something real easy that you can see. Just like you got the seasons, right? You know, the fall is like to death. The, the leaves falling off the tree and everything like that. You see what I'm saying? Then in the, uh, in the winter, the snow, that's a barrier. Everything covered up with snow. If you over there in India, the monsoon is water. Still, everything covered up. See, and then... You resurrected in the spring. The buds start getting on the trees and the flowers start blooming. You see what I'm saying? So every year we see a principle of life after death or being born again. Every season. And if Yahshua don't open your eyes to that, you'll be like, ooh, I'm so glad Chad it ain't cold no more. I can put on my sandals and my little sundresses now. You see what I'm saying? It's getting warm. That's how you would think about it. Oh, it's so pretty out here. I'm so glad it's warm. But you wouldn't know what it's pointing up to. You wouldn't know that it's pointing up to a death, burial, resurrection. You wouldn't know that it's showing you being born again, over. You've seen it all your life. Every year, it's the same thing over and over and over again. You wouldn't even know it. See, if he don't open your eyes, see, to be able to see. But go ahead. I don't know what I asked, but go ahead. Um, so Hebrews 9 would have to start at uh, 7. Okay. But into the second, we'll start at 6. Now, when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service. Okay, of now this is talking about the, uh, the high priest. And his uh uh um uh, the way that he uh, uh dealt with dealing with the uh, tabernacle in the sanctuary, his uh three steps or three times that he went up in the most holy place. You see what I'm saying? That's basically touching on this. You know, his steps are ordered. Okay, go ahead. But into the second with the high priest alone once every year. Okay, so now we we have our pictorial illustration, you know, well, we know that they went in here dead. See. But now what we're reading here, the second, read that part again. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year. See, now into the second, now we know what that means. See, in the most holy place, into the second, the high priest the only one that go in here. You see what I'm saying? And he goes in here once a year, read. Not without blood. Not without blood. See, it's a sacrifice, okay? Which he offered for himself mm -hmm. and for the heirs of the people. Okay, and for the cleansing of the sanctuary, for himself, for the heirs of the people, and for the cleansing of the sanctuary. Why it had to be blood? Because Joshua Messiah, he was a bloody mess on that cross. He was the only acceptable sacrifice unto Yahweh. That's what it's pointing up to. Go ahead and read. The Holy Spirit is this signifying mm -hmm. that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. While as the first tabernacle was yet standing. See, because this tabernacle is pointing up to the physical or the fleshly. We know that this tabernacle stood on Mount Moriah. Let's see, where, where is it at here? Mount Zion, see. And then there was a greater and more perfect tabernacle that was witnessed by Solomon's temple, where all of the vessels from the holy place and the most holy place was placed into this temple. This is pointing up to the spiritual body. This is pointing up to the natural body. So it says, while the first tabernacle was standing, it was not revealed. Okay, go ahead. Which was a figure for the time then present. See, this was just a figure for the time then present. See, all of them laws and ordinances that the children of Israel was under, it was types and shadows, see, for the time then present. But it was given to a carnal, literal, material, natural-minded people. That's why it says when Yahshua Messiah came in, he came in to fulfill everything that was written in the law and the testimony. See, he was the only one that was able to do it. Mankind couldn't do it, see. And they still, you know, got you thinking in the church world, because I know that's what I thought when I was in the church world. You see what I'm saying? That it's something that you can do to work up on your salvation. And if you sanctify yourself, holy and blameless, physically so, that that is a type of you being born again. But it does nothing at all for the consciousness of a man. You see what I'm saying? Go ahead and read. In which were offered both gifts and sacrifices mm -hmm. that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. See, he said it didn't do anything, you know, for the person in pertaining to the consciousness of a man. Okay? Uh-huh. Which stood only in meats and drinks. See, it stood only in meats and drinks. All them different sacrifices they had to offer up. 
You see what I'm saying? And just like the high priest, when he had to, uh, on the day of atonement, he had to do that once every year. But see, when Yahshua Messiah came in, which was the only acceptable sacrifice unto Yahweh, see, he did it once for all. See, now mankind has newness of life. Now mankind can be born again. What does that mean, born again? You born to the flesh and everything about the flesh. You see what I'm saying? You know, you had a fleshly way, a physical way that you worship your creator. You see what I'm saying? And all of us had our own idea, made a comfort level of how we thought God was. You see what I'm saying? But because Yahweh has given a vision at the last critical seconds of the last age that we in, he gave a divine panoramic vision to our founder. This came from Yahweh himself. You see what I'm saying? This ain't of no man. What we saying up here? See, it's Yahshua the Messiah. That's the teacher and the preacher. This is not coming from no man. See, see, and it's only through the true preaching of the gospel, which is the death the burial, and the resurrection, according to the scripture. See, the true preaching of the gospel is how mankind can be born again. See, see, born again don't mean that you ain't wearing no makeup. You see what I'm saying? That you ain't, ain't wearing, you know, you uh, wear your short, you know, your long dresses and all that. That's not what born again is. See, it's dealing with the consciousness, the psychological state of a man. You see, okay, go ahead. And diverse washings uh -huh. and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. See, it was imposed on them until the time of reformation. We know the children of Israel, when they got now, this is Egypt, wilderness, Canaan's land. Go right according to the court roundabout, the holy place and the most holy place. Court roundabout, Egypt, holy place, wilderness. Most holy place, Canaan land, which is a type of heaven. Now, when the children of Israel got up here in the Canaan's land, not only did they take up with other gods that was up there, they had two golden calves built and say, well, you know, because uh, it was it was a separation. It was uh, the tribe, the, uh, the Israel and Judah. It was a separation. OK, because when Solomon died, I can't remember Jeroboam and Jeroboam. I get them mixed up. But one of them, you know, they came to him and said, well, look, Solomon was kind of rough on us. Ease up on us a little bit. Ease up. You see what I'm saying? You know, but uh, he went to, he went to uh, the elders and the elders told him, yeah, man, you know, come on, ease up on people. Ease up on them. But then he went to his boys. See what I'm saying? He went to his boys. And his boys like, forget that, man. You know, go on, give it to him. Make it harder for him. Make it harder. You know, we running it now. We the boys now. We running it. To make it harder. You see what I'm saying? You know, and because of that, there was a separation. There was a tribe of Judah and the tribes of Israel. You see what I'm saying? So now the tribe of Israel is the one that was up here and made those two golden calves because they don't want them to go, you know, because I think they had to go and uh, deal with the ceremony of the Passover. You know, this is school now. If I'm wrong, y'all said, no, I wasn't that bad. But anyway, they had to deal with the ceremony. They had to go into a, a Jerusalem. And he built them two golden calves. So you don't have to go there. You don't have to go to Jerusalem. Look, we got two golden calves up here. Come on, y'all. Hang here. Because he said, well, if they go back to the homeland, they might want to, you know, stay there. So he said, let's build these two golden calves. Hey, that's what brought us out. And they just messed up miserably. They messed up miserably. Okay, I heard the bell. I want to get another scripture. Uh, it's in Deuteronomy. I had to write it down. Let me see. Um, uh, okay, Deuteronomy 9. But it's, uh, I think it's toward the uh, end of the uh, chapter where it talks about the reason why he delivered them. And it had nothing to do with their righteousness, but because of the evil of all the things that they had done. You see what I'm saying? We're taking up with them gods, worshiping the golden calves and all that kind of stuff. See, and I, I want that bread because we have to understand there's nothing that we did. You see what I'm saying? It's not because of our righteousness. It says mankind's righteousness is as filthy rags. You see what I'm saying? So it's not because, oh, I was a nice person. So I see why Yahweh, you know, uh, let me see. Because I was good. I tried to be kind. 
I tried to be fair to my fellow man. Ain't got nothing to do with none of that. You see what I'm saying? And he's telling them that. See, just in case you start gloating and thinking, oh, well, we the show the people. That's why Yahweh is, you know, good with us. Uh-uh. It's grace and mercy. But go ahead. If you can find it, I didn't write down a, a verse. I'm so sorry. I just wrote down the, uh, the book, Deuteronomy 9. Okay, I will start at... And then after you get that, uh, I'll end, because I heard the bell, I'll end with Jeremiah 31, 30. Go ahead. Okay. I'll start at Deuteronomy 9 and 25. Okay. Thus I fell down before Yahweh 40 days and 40 nights. Mm -hmm. This is Moses, right? Talk. And I and I fell down at the first because Yahweh had said he would destroy you. Mm -hmm. I prayed therefore unto Yahweh and said, O Yahweh Elohim, destroy not thy people and thine inheritance, which thou hast redeemed through mm -hmm. thy greatness, mm -hmm. which thou hast brought forth out of Egypt. Yeah. See, he's rehearsing this to, to the people. You know, go ahead. Remember thy servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, took not unto the stubbornness of this people, nor to their wickedness, nor to their sin. Okay. It, Unless this I'm looking uh, for what he said. It's not because of your righteousness that you've been delivered this day. It might be in the beginning. Okay. Try, try to, uh, the beginning of it. Okay. And then somebody hold Jeremiah 31, 31. We're going to end with that. Okay, this is Deuteronomy. I'll start at nine huh. five. and five. five. I'll start at okay, four go ahead. and then go to five. Okay, great. Okay, Deuteronomy nine and four. Mm -hmm. Speak not thou in thy heart after Yahweh thy Elohim mm -hmm. and cast them out from before thee, saying, For my righteousness Yahweh have brought up, brought me in the See, he's saying, Well, look, don't you be gloating and thinking because of your righteousness, because of what you did, I'm delivering you. Read. For my righteousness, Yahweh have brought me in. See, he had to say that because a lot of them thinking that, oh, you know, we the chosen people. We good with Yahweh. So he delivered us because we so good and we so chosen. You see what I'm saying? Go ahead. But for the wickedness of these nations, Yahweh doth drive them out. See, he said because of the wickedness of the nations, Yahweh drive them out before you. See, all this law, you see the laws and ordinances, you see what I'm saying? And the wickedness of a mankind's heart and mind depraved of the Holy Spirit. That's good enough because the bell is on me and I might have a minute left. Jeremiah 31, 31, and I'll end with that. Jeremiah 31, 31. Mm -hmm. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Okay, so remember I talked about that split? So he's covering all 12 tribes. He said, I'm going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Read. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. See, not according to the covenant I made with their fathers. See, in the, read. In the day that I took them by the hand yeah. to bring them out of the land of Egypt. See, in the day that I took them and brought them out of Egypt. Read. Which my covenant they, they broke. They broke covenant. They broke it. They couldn't keep it. Read. Although I was an husband. To took care of them. I was husband for them. I did everything for them, but they still broke that law. Read. Yahweh. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said Yahweh. See, this is the old covenant. He said, but this is the covenant I'm going to make after them days. What days is he talking about? After the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua Messiah. Now, outpouring the Holy Spirit with ushering in the age that we in now. He said, I'm getting ready to make a new covenant. Not the, according to the old one. See, those physical continue. I will put my law in their inward parts. He said, I will put my law in their inward parts. See, in, in, the, in the man. See, your consciousness. Read. And write it in their heart. I see the consciousness of a man. See, read. I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. He said, now I'm going to be their Elohim, and they're going to be my people. See, that's being born again. You see what I'm saying? So I hope somebody got something out there. Praise Yasha. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. May Cohen. Um, I want to acknowledge a returning visitor, Dr. I mean, visitor, Dr. I mean, David Swift. <laughs> Welcome back. Thanks for coming back to study with us. And for our second speaker for this afternoon session will be Dr. Patrick Lushuter. 
That's fine. All right. Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I really hope you got something out of the first speaker. You know who was speaking. I just sat back and said, you might as well take the whole thing, sister. But uh, it is very important that you understand what age you are in. And, as, and you must understand who put you there in this age. So if I could have, uh, let's do John the third chapter. You have to hear what Yahshua has to say about what it means to be born again. You already heard it through the first speaker. We're going to reemphasize it. Go ahead. And then I also want you to get in 1 Corinthians 15th chapter where it says in Adam all die. And in Yahshua the Messiah, all shall be what? Made alive. You can get that. But let's start with John the third chapter. This is John 3 and 1. Mm -hmm. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, mm -hmm. a ruler of the Jews. Yes. The same came to Yahshua by night mm -hmm. and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from Yahweh. Now we know you're a teacher that comes from Yahweh. Really. For no man can do these things, these miracles that yeah. thou doest, except yeah. Yahweh be with him. Except Yahweh be with him. Three. Really? Yahshua answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, mm -hmm. except a man be born again, he except, cannot see. Except a man be born again, read. Really? He cannot see the kingdom of Yahweh. He cannot see the kingdom of Yahweh. Just in case you forgot what the kingdom of Yahweh was, give me Romans 14, 17. Nicodemus says unto him. Wait, wait, wait. Give me Romans 14, 17. This is Romans 14 and 17. Read. For the kingdom of Yahweh is not meat and drink, mm -hmm. but righteousness and peace. Mm -hmm. And joy in the Holy Spirit. In the Holy Spirit. Go back to the third chapter. Three. John 3 and 4. Mm -hmm. Nicodemus saith unto him, mm -hmm. How can a man be born when he is old? How can a man be born when he is old? Read. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb? Now, you know, if that ever happened, all you women up in here would be saying some words. <laughs> you ain't coming back up in my womb like that. Okay. But go ahead, read. And be born. And be born. Read. Yahshua answered, mm -hmm. Verily, verily, I say unto thee. Go ahead. Except the man be born of water and of the spirit. And of the spirit, read. He cannot enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. Uh-oh, wait a minute. You know, something wasn't mentioned. You know, blood wasn't mentioned. Read it again. Yahshua answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Read. Except a man be born of water mm -hmm. and of the spirit, mm -hmm. he cannot enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. The reason why blood was not mentioned is because he's the container for the blood that's about to be shed. Now, how is a baby generally born in the natural? Show of blood, water breaks, and then guess what? He breathes in. Notice that blood wasn't mentioned because he's the container for the blood. Read. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That's right. Read. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Go ahead. Marvel not that I said unto thee, mm -hmm. you must be born again. Don't marvel at that. Read. The wind bloweth where it listed, mm -hmm. and thou heareth the sound thereof, mm -hmm. but cannot tell whence it cometh and whether it goeth. Go ahead. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, mm -hmm. How can these things be? How can these things be? Read. Yahshua answered and said unto him, mm -hmm. Art thou a master? 
of Israel and knoweth not these things? Aren't you a ruler? Don't didn't you have the law and the testimony that's in front of you and you don't know these things? Read. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, read. We speak that we do know. That's right. We do read. And testify that we have seen. Read. And you receive not our witness. And you, you hold that just you do not receive our witnesses. Read. I was well, about first, to run some, but I'm not going to do that right now. Read. Well, first, if I have told you earthly things. Now, if I told you earthly things. And you believe not. And you believe not. Read. How shall you believe? If I tell you. If I tell you heavenly things. Th th tell you right there. Take the natural to understand what? Yes. Spirit. He said it right there. He said it. I, I didn't say it. He said it. And that's why you have Paul saying. In Romans 119, because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them, for Yahweh has shown it unto them, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are what? Clearly seen, being understood by what? The things that are what? May, even as eternal power and supernal nation, so that they are without excuse. People, if you were listening to the first speaker, what she was simply saying is this, 1 Corinthians 15, where it says in Adam, all that. And then in Yahshua the Messiah, what? All shall be made alive. Where's that scripture? Quote it, please. Okay. 1545. Mm -hmm. And so it is written, the first Adam was made a living soul. He was made a living soul. That means all mankind came from him and Eve had the eggs, Adam had the sperm. All of mankind came from him, came from both. Read, because he called their name what? Adam, read. The last Adam was made a life-giving spirit. Now, this, that's the other critical point you need to understand, that he was made a life-giving spirit. Now, for me to do this properly, according to the law and the testimony, she already, she already did it, see? You understand? I want you to also hold the conduct of the children of Israel. See, when they received this law, she already told you that they came out, they, they came out and built the what? Golden calf, see? You understand? Indicating that they already broke the law that Yahweh said in the 20th chapter, where it says, I am Yahweh, thy Elohim, that brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt not what? Uh, 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 bow down to anything that's in the heaven above, on the earth, and under the earth. He covered everything. See? And they did it. But see, this law was indicating what state of mind they were already in. What state of mind are we talking about? Now we got to get to the reality of the thing and work ourselves back to the law and the testimony. Give me Galatians 5.17. This is what we're really dealing with. This is the reality of where we came from. Read Galatians 5, 17. Really? For the flesh lusted after the spirit. Yes. And the spirit against the flesh. Really? And these are contrary the one to the other. Contrary one to the other. Really? So that you cannot do the things that you would. Yeah, you can't do the things that you would. Really? But if you be led of the spirit. But if you be led of the spirit. Go ahead. Ye are not under the law. You are not under the law. Because guess what? This law. See? This is, the divine, this is the divine law that controls everything. Problem you had is what the first speaker said when Adam, when, when Eve was deceived and Adam transgressed the garden, if you use your tabernacle properly, that means the second veil went up. Let's look at it. Come over here. You have seven steps in this pattern. You have the gate. You have an altar of sin sacrifice. You have the brazen labor, which is the third step. You have the fourth step, which is the door that divides from the holy place to the, uh, and from the court, from the court roundabout. Then you have the fifth place being the holy place. This sixth step is what? The second veil, and we call it the veil of the what? Flash. And then you go into the most holy place. You understand what I'm saying? Where thus sitteth the what? Throne of Yahweh. So there was a time, that's the wrong way to say that. When Adam was in eternity, because he was created in eternity, this veil was not up. Man is made of body, soul, spirit. 
This veil, there was a communion between spirit and soul. That means he was that one with his heavenly father until she read for you Genesis, the third chapter. As soon as he, he, he touched of that tree and ate of it, this veil went up. This second veil went up. That is why when you read Romans 5 and 12, wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death, by this, de this place, the communication, when we say the communication was cut off, this veil was put up. That's why you see, when you go back over here to the elementary chart, you look at Adam's face, if you can zero in, you look at Adam's face and you see what? Woe, sorrow, what? Grief. Because he was that one here, but now he's coming out, Eli, Eli, Lamb, I what? Sebastianite. My L, my L, what have you, what? Forsaken me. Because you broke the law. See, that already indicated to you that you need a what? You need a savior. See, now when you go on to this law that was spoken down to the children of Israel, the law of sin and death was showing you how bad you really were. Okay. Okay, so when you read Galatians 5, 17, go ahead, read. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. These are the works of the flesh. This is what he inherited. To, because in Romans 8 and 6, it says, to be carnally minded is what? Death. death. And death passed upon what? All men. For all men have sinned. Do you see what we inherited? Now. The works of the flesh are what? We're getting real now. See, this is what you need to be saved from. Go ahead, read. Adultery. Adultery. See, when they came out here and built this golden calf, that was adulterous. Didn't Yahweh say I was a husband under them and said, Yahweh, you understand? Read. Fornication. Fornication. That means you just bouncing, you know, from a natural standpoint. Men bounce the women all over the place. Women bounce the men all over the place. But the true spiritual reality is, is that you believe in everything else. Well, what thus saying? Yahweh. I'll run to the Roman Catholics. Okay, they don't, say, they don't satisfy me. I'll go to the Baptists. No, they don't satisfy me either. I'll go to the Hindus. Oh, no, I'm not that satisfied. Well, you can be the church of your own self. Hmm. Say what you inherited. Go ahead, read. Uncleanness. Unclean. Uh, unclean. Don't let me get uh, uh, Ezekiel 16. I don't got time for that. Go ahead, read. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. Strong lust. Read. Idolatry. Idolatry. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. Hatred. Hatred. Variant. Now, do, do you see the hatred going on around here? I don't mean in here, class. You know, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about yeah. See? You see what they're suffering? This is carnal mindedness. Read. Variance. Variance. Emulations. Yes. Wrath. Wrath. Strife. Uh, boy, go ahead. Strife. Strife. Seditions. Seditions. Heresies. Heresies. Envying. Envying. Did, ooh, look at him. Murder. I want to read murder. Yo, let me go back there with Cain now. We go real quick. See all these murders going on around you? You already had a man shooting in Texas. Go ahead, read. Drunkenness. Drunkenness. Go ahead. Revelings. Re party all the time. Read. And such like. And such likes. Of the witch I Weren't tell you. Weren't they partying back here with this golden Catholic man? Read. Of the witch I tell you before. Yes. As have I also told you in time past? Yes. That they which do such things yes. shall not inherit the kingdom. You of cannot Yahweh. inherit the kingdom of Yahweh, which is peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy. I'm I'm getting real with this thing. Go back to the third verse. I mean the third chapter where it says, and you didn't believe our witnesses, because I want to focus on this for just a bit. And I hope you hold in the conduct of the children of Israel in the Elohim book in the fourth volume, real quick. But, but go ahead and get, uh, 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 I want that thing, the situation where Yahweh sent those spies over, what, in the Canaan's land, and they spied that land for what, 40 days, you understand what I'm saying? And then they came back with the evidence. They came back with the fruit. They came back with all this stuff. You notice how I'm pointing here to the what? 
Canaan's land, and that's the third compartment according to the migratory track. I'm sorry, I'm not going to use this pattern. Let's use your pattern. The antediluvian age would represent the court round about. The third age would represent the what? Holy place. The uh, most holy place would represent uh, 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 the fourth age as compared to. You understand? So you're comparing these things to the pattern. See? Now watch what's about to happen. They brought back the evidence and proof. But what? Ten brought back a what? Bad report. Two yeah. brought back a what? Good report. Typifying the what? The law and the testimony. Please examine your pattern. You see, when Yahshua the Messiah was on the cross, that would be considered as a veil. Why? Because you go into Matthew's, the, I believe, the 27th chapter, where they say in the temple of the, the veil of the temple was what? Raised in 20. You understand? From the top to the bottom. Don't you understand that? That's what Yahshua the Messiah represented that veil because he took on all the sins of the world. World upon him. Don't you understand? So what am I saying that this is important? Because remember when they said, uh, when they said, what can we do that we work the works of Elohim? What did they say? They, Yahshua said what? That you believe on him. Get that for me, please. I know I'm just I'm running my mouth. But if you don't believe in Yahshua the Messiah, that means you have rejected the witnesses and you are what? Yet in your sins that you will continue to transgress. Don't you understand that this was the one that was going to change the state of your mind? Here, get that for me, please. I don't know if it's Matthew 7, 30. Go ahead. This is John 6 and 20, not 6 and 25. Read. 28. Read. And they said unto him, what shall we do that we might work the works of Elohim? What, 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 must we, what must we do to work the work? You want to do work all the time. This thing calls you to do work. Don't you, see, don't you know that to be born again, it causes you to rest? Don't you understand yes. where it says, come unto me, all you that what? Labor and I have a left and I will give you what? Rest. I will give you rest. For I am meek and lowly and what? Don't you understand what's being said unto you? Stop working. Because he is the work. Now, why don't you just take a rest? You get my point? Read. And 29. He didn't 30. tell you to do these carnal ordinances in the first place. Are you a Jew and a Je or a Gentile? And on top of that, we're in a different age. You're not supposed to be doing that in the first place. He said he came into what? Fulfill the law and the testimony. Keep reading what you got in John 6, 20. Go ahead, read. 29, first. Read. Yahshua answered and said unto oh. them. Yes. This is the work. This the, oh, you see that? This is the work. Read. Of Elohim. Of, of what? Of Elohim. You didn't say man, did you? You didn't say the scribes and the Pharisees, did you? Did you do that work? Did I do that work? It's the work of Elohim. Read. That you believe on him. Yes. Who, that you believe on him. Who he has sent. Who he has sent. Read. And they said, therefore, unto him. Okay. What sign showest thou then? Oh, boy. See, see, they want a sign. Mm -hmm. People. Go ahead, read. Finish it. I, finish that it. we may see and believe thee. What? Show me a sign that I can see and believe you. Read. What, what doest thou work? Read. Our father did eat manna in the desert. Oh, here we go. As it is written. Read. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Don't you know Yahshua has given you bread from heaven for you to eat? But for you to eat that bread from heaven, you have to be what? Born again. Just as all the flesh came from Adam and Eve, being the what? first man, Adam, you understand? And he was producing offspring in the flesh. Don't you understand that Yahshua represents the second man, Adam? And if he's the second man, Adam, that means he has to be what? Fruitful and multiply. Uh-oh, how did that work? Through Yahshua's death, burial, resurrection, and the outpouring of the what? Holy Spirit. You're what? 
born again. And you have to have spring, but it's not the offspring in the physical. I'm going to tease on somebody. I ain't teasing nobody. Mariah, that child you have in your hand right there. What did you call that when it first came out of the womb? No? Isn't it called a newborn? Oh. <laughs> that would make you the old boy. <laughs> you the old. Come on up here. Come on, show. Come on. We don't say it. I, I don't care. It's fine. Come on. Come on. If you be off, you be fine. I'm, I'm using the description. See, how, she, she, this is called the old boy. See, the mother. Oh, 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 you understand what I'm saying? And, and through marriage, through marriage, you understand? Proper marriage, too. You understand? They produce an offspring. And when the baby was born, this is new. Like, I can't do that. I got one Stand with me and say, you understand? So you call him a born when you have a child. But don't you see that's a type, that's a shadow, that's an allegory of why Yahshua had to die that day. So we can have new moons. What do you mean? At Yahshua's death bear, when he was preaching his gospel for three and a half years, what do you think he was doing? He was, he was, he was. Setting up a new priesthood. You got to be newly born to be in this priesthood. Don't you understand? You weren't going to do this no more. Now, get me Peter, First Peter, the second chapter. This is this is bringing into the reality of the thing. See, and I also want you to get in Romans that we are being conformed to the image of his what? Dear son. Or we're going to be made a what? New creature. You understand? So that you may eat of that heavenly bread. Go ahead. Give me second, first Peter, first Peter, second chapter. Go ahead. I'm running now. I, I just go ahead. Go ahead. Wherefore, laying aside all malice. Oh, 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 oh. Laying aside all malice. Did we just read that in Galatians 5, 7? All malice. Read. And all guile. And all, ooh, and all, that means you ain't lying. Read. And hypocrisies. And hip, ooh, hypocrisy too? Oh, man, that sounds like the old man. Read. And envies. And envies. And all evil speaking. And all, all evil speaking. Don't let me go back there in Matthew where it says, it's not that that goes into the mouth. You understand? That causes it. If that, that comes out of the mouth. Don't you understand the state of mind that they were in? You better find that scripture while I'm running with that. Go ahead. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, 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 uh. As, as newborn babes. As, oh, as desire, newborn babes. Read. Desire the sincere milk of the word. What did you say? Desire the sincere milk of the word. You said sincere. Milk. Uh-oh, when a baby gets born, right? Don't isn't there breast milk produced? And spiritually and psychologically, if you go according to the law and the testimony, a little bit to the law, a little bit to the what testimony. Don't you know you begin to grow in the sincere milk of the truth? Read that ye may grow thereby. That you may what grow thereby. But well, we know you grow up from a natural standpoint. But spiritually and psychologically, once he once he gives you up that holy thing, you have to grow in what? Grace. Go ahead, read. If so be, if so be ye have tasted that Yahweh is gracious. Oh, wait a minute. If you taste that Yahweh is gracious, read. To whom coming as unto a living stone. Disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of Elohim and precious. Do you not? Now, and precious. You see how precious your soul really is to Yahweh? Yeah, he did not do all this for your sake. He did it for what? His holy name's sake. Did you know born means to deliver? 
Uh, Mayor, where's your app for the Strong's Concordance? Please look up Born, please. I know I'm 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 working people today. Don't you understand that that don't you understand that when the children of Israel ate the Passover, went through the divided waters of the Red Sea and resurrected, understand they sung that song of what victory, and then they came out here, and then those spies came out there and gave that laugh. You understand the ten lied, the two did not lie. You understand, and guess what? The children of Israel's heart what melted. And they had to stay out here for what? 40 years. See, until their carcass, what? Fell in the wilderness. So in the process of all that going on, remember, 603,550 fighting men came up out of the land of Egypt. Now, after the newborn came in, you know there was 144,000 that came up here into the wood, Canaan's land. You do understand that, right? And I believe that's in Revelation somewhere. And did you know that they received a new name? They received a new name. If you're going to be newly born, you're going to have to have a new name. We're talking about your spiritually, we're talking about your heavenly father. Ooh, you're going to have to help me. Where we're able to call him Abba, father, Abba, my father. Why? Because now your attention is no longer to these priests out here and these gurus and your mama and your daddy and whatnot. But man is made of body, soul, spirit. What do you think he did on the day of Pentecost? I better come over here. What did you think he did on the, you know what? You know what? Slow it down. You know what happened when he sat there when, after his death, burial, resurrection? You understand? Didn't he come up first? And then in the 27th chapter of Matthew, then they came up after his resurrection. You understand? So that was the that was those that were kept in the what grave that obeyed and had faith in Yahweh. But watch the new birth. That's Joel 2:28. Watch the new birth. And on when the day of Pentecost was what fully come of one accord, then came a rushing mighty wind. Don't you see? And the, and the Holy Spirit fell on, on all of them. Did you understand? That was the first one, but he has to complete the plan. It wasn't just to the Jews. Seven years later, guess what? On Acts 10, 44, when Peter said, when he, Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Spirit, what? fell on them that what heard the word and the circumcised was astonished that the that the Holy Spirit fell on the uncircumcised. Why is that? Because the Jews had to do the law. The Gentiles did not. You're a Gentile. Nobody told you to do any law. All he had to do was just believe on the words. You understand that yet that was spoken to one of the apostles that was an eyewitness of Yahshua the Messiah. Don't you understand what's being said unto you? You know why you sitting here is because it's the Holy Spirit that pulled you here. It was the Father that drew you in. Listen to his son. Now you coming from the second man, Adam, which is very important because the second man, Adam, typifies the one quickening spirit and that's in Ephesians 2 and 1 you have been quickened who were once what dead and what trespasses and sins good get Ephesians I know I'm holding something get in the Ephesians second chapter you need to understand this is the purpose of what he's doing he's gathering all those in what heaven don't you understand and gathering all those what on earth coming to his son that's why we emphasize Seriously, and I know, I know, I know. Look, talk to your Savior. This is the new covenant. You have the opportunity that Adam and Eve had before the transgression when he takes that second veil. Don't you see? He took it off. You heard what I said. Did you hear what I said? Yeah, talk to him. You'll be surprised. He'll answer you back. This is the reality of the new birth. He's your true daddy. You're under the second man Adam now. Go ahead. What did I call for? Read. Because, because I gotta, go ahead. Go ahead. Two and one. Go ahead. Ephesians two and one. And you have he quickened. What? Who were what? Who were dead in trespasses and sin. People. 
Ready to admit this? You were dead in trespasses and sin. What that means? You took all the traditions of your physical mom and physical dad. Christmas, Easter, I got to do the law. I got to show up, uh, eat communion, get water baptized. You didn't question it. You just, I, well, and you get presents on Christmas. No one thinking about no Jesus. You get your little tricycle. You get your little Monopoly game. You get, yeah, that's what, Christmas, yeah. My birthday, my birthday. Ooh, you're celebrating the flesh again. My birthday. This is what you're supposed to be celebrating. Yahshua Messiah, you understand? That's the true birthday for you. Get my point. Hang on. Hurry up. Second verse. Yes. We're in in time past. Yes. You walked according to the course of the, this world. Didn't I tell you? We all did. According yeah, to the prince of the power of the air. Oh, the prince of the power of the air. Yeah, that was beautiful. Yeah, that's right. His sweet talking in the garden, he's still sweet talking with all his damnable spirits running around. Ready? This we almost out there. The spirit that now working in the children of disobedience. Disobedience to who? Disobedience to who? Oh, and you just and we just said I sat there, altar boy, yeah, uh -huh. communion, yeah, love the way, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, what a fool! Really? Now we're holding on. Um, Is that it? I, I want a little bit more. Okay, Ephesians three and three. Really? No, 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 no. Two and three. Yes. Among whom also we all had our we conversations. All had our conversations with what? In times past. Yeah. In the lust of our flesh. In the lust of our see carnal mind. You see the carnal mind? I want this. I want that. It's about me. It's all about me. There's nothing else but me. And then, you, you, you understand? You ain't thinking about no Yahweh. You ain't thinking about Lord. You ain't thinking about God. You ain't thinking about nothing, but it is about me. Oh, Easter time, Easter eggs. What kind of foolishness is this? What's wrong? Fulfilling the desires of the flesh. You're fulfilling the desires of the flesh. Whatever. And of the mind. And of the mind. Whatever's in the mind. You understand? Hate, malice, and strife. This is the reality. You need to be what? Born again. You came in the physical. Oh, you wouldn't be here. But guess what? But guess what? Guess what? But keep reading. And we're by nature the children of wrath. We were angry children. Read. Go ahead. Even as others. Go ahead. But Yahweh, who is rich in mercy. Oh. He looked at you. Come on in. Read. For his great love, wherewith he loved us. Where he loved us. Read. Even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together. What you do? So that means I got to go to my tabernacle pattern. Where did the quickening take place? Where? In the what? At the door? What number is that? Uh oh. Let me come over here. Hold it. What age we here? Oh, okay. Uh huh. He brought you in. Now give me Ezekiel uh, 36, 23. He didn't do this for your sake. He did it for his name's sake. Why? Because his name is Yahshua. I have to go back. I'm sorry. I'm working y'all today. I'm sorry. Ezekiel go ahead. Ezekiel 36 and 23. Go ahead. I want it where it says, I'm not doing this for your sake because the previous speaker talked about your righteousness. So get this clear. This is not about your righteousness. Read. Okay, we're, we're still getting there. Okay, okay, come on. Yeah, because see, this is what it means to be born again. That means those nine divine. You got it? Yeah, 36 and 22. Read. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, yeah. thus saith Yahweh Elohim. Read. I do not this for your sakes. I don't do this for your sakes. O house of Israel. O house of Israel. Read. But for mine holy name's sake. What? What? But, but for mine holy name's sake. What's his name again? Yahshua. Yahshua. Yahweh Yahshua. is salvation. While you sitting here piddling around with your Xbox, this is the spirit that's sitting here quickening your dance. There's a purpose going on. The purpose is for you to come to him to save your soul. 
Rick, which he has profaned among the heathen. Now you profaned the heathen. Why? Because they just did that following idols and everything else going on. Read. And I will sanctify my great name. Yes. Which was profaned among the heathen. Yes. Which ye have profaned in the midst of them. Read. And the heathen shall know that I am Yahweh. That I am Yahweh. Read. Saith Yahweh Elohim. What's our first thing? To help you. To help you. Find and know Yahweh our Elohim. As he what? You know what that means? Spirit, soul, body. Uh-oh. You're face to face with your creator. Don't look at me like that. Spirit, soul, body. He took away your second veil, and now you are face to face with him. Read. That's what it means to be born again. Read. Say the Yahweh. Tell him. Read. When I shall sanctify in you before their eyes. Read. For I will take you from among the heathen yes. and gather you out of all countries Read. and will bring you into your own land. Read. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. Now, this is the real clean water. You understand? Read. And ye shall be clean Read. from all your filthiness. From all your filthiness. I, I, look, I don't have to point to nobody else. All I have to do is look at me. Damn, look how filthy you are. Ready. And from all your idols, and all the idols, Ready. will I cleanse you? Will I cleanse you? That's what he said. So if you hold in some idols, here comes this flood. It's gonna be cleaned out. Remember, Dagon had his head cut and his arms cut. You understand? All these idols up in every A new heart also will I give you. A new heart can't work with the old one because you too vain. A new heart, Ready? And a new spirit. And a what? And a new spirit. And a new what? Spirit. Spirit. Will I put within you? Will I put within you? Really? And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. Hey, children. I won't take your stony heart. No, I'll just raise my hand. No, all oh, y'all fine. Okay. Stony heart, you just a stone ass. You know, I'm telling I'm sorry. They said that. Go ahead, read me. And I will give you a heart and heart of flesh. A heart of flesh. It's pliable. Read. And I will put my spirit within you. And I will. He said what? I will put my spirit within you. Read. And cause you to walk in my statutes. And I. I listen. Okay. You ain't hearing this thing. Right? He said I will cause you. So what? Yeah. Walk in my statutes. So that means you're going to walk. In my statutes. Want to know why? Because you can't do it. So I have to cause you to walk in my statutes. Read. And ye shall keep my judgment. And you will what? Keep my judgments, read. And do them. And you will do them. Now, sometimes we have a tendency of saying, I ain't doing that. Now, I will tell you this, but you need to do it. No, See, that's that little old stuff. In there. No, I ain't doing Really? You want to play the Jonah? Go ahead, run. We're going to catch you with something. And guess what's going to happen? A dead. Burial and a resurrection, and he'll turn you white. And guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna do what he told you to do. Ain't that so? <laughs> we sometimes, no, I'm too tired. That's me. I can raise my hand. I can see that. But guess what? You're gonna do it anyway. And ye shall dwell in the in the land that I gave to your fathers. See? And, Read. And ye shall be my people, and I will be your Elohim. Did you hear what he said? You will be my people, and I will be what? Your Elohim. This is proving that he is your father. Where is that scripture where it says that we may cry, I by father, I by my father? And there's another one I want you to get. I got to find it. Uh, this is the, I want you to go back to Romans, the eighth chapter, where you are being made a what? New creature in Yahshua the Messiah? Why? Because he's taken away woe, sorrow, grief, malice, envy, strife. You understand? From your soul. Now, guess what? Once that happens, now guess who gets to show up in the, in the garden? Satan. Why? 
because he's going to bother you like you've never been bothered before. Because all those satanic spirits that were in you, they're cast out. Now you're a new creature. And now guess what's going to happen? Now I'm going to bother you. But see, have be of good cheer. What's this? This is the woman what? Oh, so you're being protected by who? Yahshua, you were the husband. This is the woman back in the what? Wife. The wife is back in the husband. Why I say it like that? That was stupid. It's the woman that's back in the what? Son. And see, now we're talking about the attributes of intelligence, which is not quickened by his divine spirit. That's why he's quickened. Go ahead. I want that in Romans. Romans this is, 8 and 29. Go, go what now? You are a new creature. It's up there. I know it is. Well, the earnest of because nice. see people, this is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because see people, well, you, before we came into class, we just looked at a tree. That's a tree. Okay, cool. I'm going to sit under the shade and relax. Yeah. Now you look at the tree and go, you look at the sunrise and sunset. Oh, it's 70 degrees out. I can go to the beach. No, now it's sunset. Find Yahshua's what? Yeah. It appears to be buried in the what? Horizon. And it resurrects the next day. You don't look at it the same way. You are new birth. Did you know Dr. Kelly was a new birth too? He was a bibliomaniac until he received this what? Divine vision and revelation. And then he said, I won't be the same no more. What does this new covenant or new birth supposed to make you? You're not supposed to be the same no more. That's what that means. You understand? Remember, wait a minute, I didn't even get done with that. What about Paul? Paul was consent to step into murder. That's the works of the what? Flesh. Until he got knocked on his knee. Get my point? And guess what? Why do you persecute me? He didn't say them. He said me. He has a body down here. What you doing? And guess what? He was what? Converted. Who did that? A man? Uh-uh. What's supposed to be happening now as you being a new birth? You're supposed to be converted. By who? The spirit of Yahweh. That is resur that he's resurrecting your soul to see him and nobody what? else. That is what it means to be a newborn. You see things new, and now that you know how wicked this world is, you're looking for what? A new heaven and a what? New earth. Because you know this old heaven. Let me go back to my pattern. This old heaven and old earth what? Passed away. Look at your ages and dispensations, chart. The, the, you're looking for Yahshua to come and glorify your soul to enter into a what? New heaven and new earth state. You want me to start back from the beginning? Remember the angels? And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon what? Fought in his angels. And then he was what? Cast out of one heaven. And wasn't it new now? Super ain't there no more. New now. Guess what? Remember when Noah sat there and he built an ark. And then, then and the heart of man was what? Only what? Evil continually. I'm quoting in Genesis now. You understand? And the flood came. And then the ark passed over from one age to the next. Wasn't that a new heaven? And new yeah. earth? And Adam? And, and all that came out. What does Noah mean? You better understand what I'm saying to you. What does Noah mean? Comforter? Uh-oh. Yahshua says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, when the Father will send in my name, he, he didn't say you. He said he will teach you what? All things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever. Ah, I, I said unto you. Now let me use this by the pattern one more time. Okay, now watch. This is Yahweh pure spirit. No one understands Yahweh pure spirit. You understand? But he came through that dividing veil and he took on a what? He took on a shape and a form. He's the first, first what? Born of all what? Creation. You don't believe it? I'll get it in the book. Colossians 1 15. That he is the firstborn of what? All creation. You want to see him? You want to watch him be born again? Remember, he came through the through 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 the virgin what? 
bear. Don't you understand that this was the word made flesh? Why? Because Adam was the first created son. You understand? Uh, Yahweh and then Yahshua the Messiah came in to fulfill. He was born through the one. You see how that works by the pattern? See that? Strand? Intermediate concrete. He was born. You better get Colossians 1 15. No one's going to believe what I'm saying. And I don't want them to. Go ahead. Colossians 1 15. Read it. Who is the image of the invisible Elohim? Read. The firstborn of every creature. Oh, 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 what? You just said Elohim is the way. Firstborn. firstborn of every creature. Yeah. I haven't even gotten downstairs yet. But to the court round back. Don't you get what I'm saying? And that's why he came through the loins of the court. See how he's born again? Oh, oh, ain't that something? Didn't he come down here as Joshua, the son of Nun? Ain't that right? And delivered the children of Israel. Then he had to come down. He what? Come again. You understand? To deliver his, to deliver Israel from their what? Sins. Don't you see that? What do you have to do? Now, you are already born in the flesh. You inherited all of these ridiculous, wicked attributes. You understand? But now, once he sits you down and causes you to be in what? In heaven. Sitting right here in the city. Born again. But you're not born after the flesh. But you're now born after the what? Spirit. So now you go, Abba, Father. Abba, my Father. What do you have? Because I don't know what I call anymore. Read. I'm running my mouth. Go ahead. Um, for by him were all things created. Yes. That are in heaven. Yes. And that are in earth. Yes. Visible and invisible. The rest you can read when you get home. What do you have? Uh, 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 go, go ahead. Whatever you got. Okay. Galatians 4 will start at 4. Yes. But when the fullness of the time was come. Yes. Yahweh sent forth his son. He sent forth his son. Read. Made of a woman. Made of a woman. Made under the law. Made under the law. To redeem them. To that redeem were the law. them that were what? Under the law. Under the law. Read. That we might receive the adoption of son. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me he made you a son? Oh. Read. And because ye are sons. And because you're a son. So, read. Yahweh has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba. What did, what did you say? Oh, say it again. Say it again. And because ye are sons. And because you are a son. Yahweh has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts. Into your heart. Read. Crying, Abba, Father. So now I don't see him go, my, my. John, John, May, May, Chiquita, Chiquita, Gabby, Gabby, Mommy, Daddy, no! You cry unto you. Because we know one thing, none of us can deliver each other out of them. True. How do you get delivered out of hate, malice, anger, strife, confusion, mm. and this? How you do that? Yahshua, through his grace, has to put his spirit in you to cry to him. And now he gets to remove jealousy, envy, malice. Don't you think that if he's removing that, he's replacing it with something? Don't you see? You got lust. Well, we kicked that out and put love. You were ignorant, so we kicked that out and put you knowledge of him. Not of us, of him. Exactly. The foundation that we receive, that's not of us. That's of him. The power of the resurrection, that's not of us. That's of him. Did you not understand that Israel is power with Elohim? And do you understand that if the Holy Spirit is in you, that he has already what? Overcame the what? World. Uh-oh. How many more minutes I have? Because I don't want to still be there. Uh, you got about it. Oh, I got something to talk about. Good. Now, here's my point. Go ahead. Say, is there any more? Seven. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son, and as a son, being an heir of Yahweh through the Messiah. Oh. Through the Messiah. Eternal life is the what? 
No, the only true Elohim, or Yahshua the Messiah, whom he has sent. And what does it say in the 10th aim to inherit eternal life? Yeah. In the what? Kingdom. Of who? Yahshua. So that means you can't just walk up in that kingdom anytime you want to and feel like they No, no, no. You have to be invited. You have to be conceived of the Holy Spirit in your heart and mind. Then you have to be born of him. See, and then you have to grow up in him by grace. You get my point? Read. Uh, now you're holding uh, Romans 8, 29. Okay. Go ahead. In the conduct of children of Israel. Yeah, I know. I, I, I probably flew past that. Go ahead with Romans the Romans. 8, Read. 29. Go ahead. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. Read. To be conformed to the image of his son. To the image of his dear son. That is why you, you go through your trials and tribulations. So you may be conformed to the image of his dear son. Read. That he might be the firstborn. The what? What? That is like what? He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Okay. Moreover, whom he did predestinate. Read. Them he also called. Read. And whom he called, read. them he also justified. Uh oh, read. And whom he justified, read. them he also glorified. Uh oh, read. What shall we then say to these things? If Elohim be for us, who can be against us? Okay. Elohim be for you. Who can be what? Yes, against you. Against you. Do you know you have the spirit of the creator in you? And we sit here, way, 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 and he's just looking at you. When if, I can't wait till you turn and talk to me. Way, 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 way. I'll call, I'm venting my problem. Way, 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 way. What was me? Way, way, wait a minute. Who are you supposed to turn to? What did the prophets always told Israel? If you just turn to me. If you just turn to me. If you just turn to me. Turn to me. Oh, no, you know, some, some, there's some wild children out there. No, I can solve my problem. <laughs> you haven't learned your lesson yet. Watch this. Can you go back through a what? Death. Burial what? Resurrection. So when you finally learn your lesson, hey, Yahshua, you delivered me. Guess what? Lesson yeah. number two. <laughs> right. yeah. Lesson number two. There's a school, y'all. What are you going to learn? Lesson number five. 580. <laughs> lesson 1,000. <laughs> but you know what's happening? You're growing in stature in him because yeah. he said, I will cause you to walk in my life. stature. That's what it means to be born again. Because now you're under Yahweh. Yah is the what? Masculine portion. Way is the what? Feminine portion. Just as he told Adam to be fruitful and multiply. What do you think is happening under Yahshua the Messiah? Don't you know that he is the that he is the son that took on his what? Father's name. You have a new name to call on now. You don't have to call Jesus no more. That's a lie. You have a true father that really loves you. Loves you beyond you don't understand. You understand? His love is intense. And I'm telling you right now, I'm talking about experience now. He is intense. You love you, he's going he to put you all over the place. But you're going to follow him. You understand? I said, I don't want to do it today, Yahweh. Go ahead, be Jonah. Go ahead. I'm going to get you. And when you do, you're going to be crying under my name. You ain't crying under no creature's name. You're going to be crying under mine. But I want to do this. Okay. Oh, yeah. He's just like a father. Spoil the ride. Young Henry, if you don't, if you don't give the ride, guess what? You, you, you spoil the child if you don't. You understand? I forgot that scripture. You know what I'm talking about. Behold, the born also the strong. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. What's, what does born mean? So I can get done because that bell rang. Okay, this is born from the uh, Strong's Dictionary. Yes. Um, it said, out of men who father children. Yeah, yeah. To be born. To be born. Really. To be begotten. To be begotten. To be begotten. 
to engender, cause to arise, excite. Oh, read. It's an exciting gospel. You understand? Read. In a Jewish sense of one who brings others over to his way of life. To convert. He, he brought someone. you over to his way of life. He say he's the way, the truth, and the what? Life. life. There's no other life but him. Newborn. What does it mean to be uh, under the new birth? It means now you answer to your true father and mother. This is why we emphasize and other classes emphasize talk to your creator. He is not on the chart. He is not on in the reality of this thing. He's not on the chart. He's for real. And he will answer you, son. One of them is be delivered to. No, what did you say? Be God, be born, bear, gender, bring Did he bear us on evil's ways? Read. Be delivered. Be delivered. Mm. He delivered us down here, didn't he? He delivered the new birth also. He brought them over. And they came over what? Clean. So if you have the Holy Spirit, you are clean. But you will go through your trial. And you will go through your tribulation. Watch this. Did you see? Did you see? Did you see? This is the new birth down here. And you're about to be ushered into a new heaven and a new earth state. You can't stay down here. You have to look under Yahshua the Messiah to deliver you out because there's too much well down here. And you better be happy. Yahweh has not shown you the true hell going on around before the universal revelation. He couldn't handle it. That's how you see a father protect his son. You see that? That's the new birth. He will give you a new spirit. He can have faith in him. I'm telling you right now, we can't do it. Only Yahshua decides to do it. I would keep pointing back there. But look, this is for real, y'all. You're about to be delivered. You're in the fourth age. You're about to enter into the fifth. Just like he delivered the children of Israel, he's going to deliver you for his what? Holy name's sake. He ain't doing it anything else. That's why you're here. You're not here for your sake. If you had your choice, if you had your choice, you would have ran out of here already. But you're here for his holy what? And so with these few words, please, under this old new covenant, go to him. He will deliver you. He always has. He always will. Just look to him in your heart and in your mind. Do you understand? And so with these few words, I say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to thank the vessels, all the vessels that came forth this afternoon. Praise Joshua. I just have a few announcements uh, before we have doxology. We meet publicly, publicly at the Best Western Plus Hotel at 4400 Frontage Road in Hillside, Illinois, um, Mondays, uh, on Sundays from 1230, from 12 to 2 p.m. on every Sunday. And we also meet uh, twice a month on Thursdays. In-person classes will be announced on a month-to-month -month basis. The next Thursday in-person class will be May the 25th. Uh, also, children, uh, I'll save the rest for uh, after class, but uh, we also just want to thank returning visitor David Swift for coming to study with us. Please come back. Well, may we stand for doxology. Uh, this is taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. May we bow our hearts and mind. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all times, now and ever, 
Let the class say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number two meeting at 2 30. Yeah. 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 Yeah.